Hi, I'm Catherine, Senior Project Manager for HS2 on the Bromford Tunnel. And here I am, stood in front of the eye of the first tunnel in the Bromford East Portal at Water Orton. The Bromford Tunnel is three and a half miles long, taking high-speed trains from the Bromford East Portal here at Water Orton, under the Parkhall Nature Reserve, to the West Portal at Watchwood Heath, where the trains then continue to the Curzon Street Station in the heart of Birmingham city centre. Originally, the tunnel was meant to be shorter. However, we've extended it to remove the need for complex engineering above ground. There are huge benefits to the extension of the tunnel, not least in the Park Hall Nature Reserve, we no longer need to remove parts of the ancient woodland, and we're also avoiding the need to divert the River Tame. The first TBM, Mary Ann, was launched last summer. Mary Ann is better known as the famous author George Eliot, who was born in Nuneaton. So far, the first TBM has tunnelled under the Park Hall Nature Reserve, the River Tame, and will continue along the line of the M6 motorway. So we are now roughly at a third of the progress, uh, slightly more than 800 rings, and we keep having this steady progress, uh, and Marianne is still performing and behaving correctly. Marianne is just one piece of a big jigsaw, actually. It's, it may be the, the queen of the show, but actually there is a big part around that, which enables us to launch a machine. So it takes years to come to that point. We first need to build the box, we need to build all the surrounding, we need to order the machine. The machine needs to be built in Germany, fully tested, shipped here, reassembled fully, tested, and then finally off, off we go. So the launch is a critical phase per se. It's more of a slow start. We have to build up the learning curve. We have to enter the ground. We have to understand how the ground is behaving and the reaction of the machine to the ground, twisting and adjusting the different parameters. We also encounter our first third parties actor along the way, whether it is seven trains, open reach, we are now in the close vicinity of, um, of Network Rail. We're actually now in their zone of influence. So it is a lot of communication and organization to make sure our third parties are satisfied with the level of expertise. And we have now a second team which is just gearing up, which is the civil works team, which, is, which will be building whatever is coming just outside of the tunnel. Because when the train is entering very fast, they need to go through some aerodynamic structure. Uh, because our high speed train and to the nature of the train make it necessary. So the, the civil team work team is gearing up to prepare those work at the moment uh, with a very impressive formwork just being assembled. Behind me, you can see our second TBM, Elizabeth, who has just been launched. We, we talk about the first TBM, now we're on the second drive because we will have two machines running at the same time. So the team is actually outside because we're just coming out of a phase of assembly, which got us very busy for quite some months to get all the pieces together. Part of them, part of them coming from abroad and part of it coming from Dorothy, which uh, was our tunneling boring machine in Long Inchington. So we've been transporting, dismantling part of Dorothy and transporting here, them to here, to Bromford. And we've been reassembling that since then. She's named after Elizabeth Cadbury of the Cadbury family, the well-known local philanthropist. The name, it's based on the community, school community engagement programme we have at Balfour BT Vinci, which is very dear to us. Uh, we've done a lot of engagement with them. We've helped developing their forest, playground. So there is this long-term building relation. So when we had to come up with the name, we asked the school if they were happy to propose a name for us. This is for my year one children because in the curriculum they learn a lot about um, Cadbury World. Uh, the children come up with Elizabeth because of how much she did for the community. The children are going to be really happy with the name. It's, just, it's great, I've learnt so much being here. You don't see this part of it, so it's been a privilege to come down and actually see everything that's on site and how hard everybody works. In total, there are around 9,000 people working on HS2 in the West Midlands and approximately 450 working on this specific operation alone. In the region, we've created 200 new apprenticeships. We are very keen on having apprentices because it is the best way to learn about, about the job and to transmit the experience for the older part of the workforce to the younger part of the workforce. It's great working on HS2. It's a once in a lifetime. Hopefully, it'll be here for generations to come. Um, Hopefully will help in my career progressing, doing different tunnels and maybe branching out to different corners of the world. 
But it's not just in the West Midlands where we're creating jobs. We've opened up a factory in Avonmouth in the southwest where we're employing approximately 100 people to build the segments for this tunnel. We are now at uh, roughly 78% of the first drive, I mean, in terms of segment produce. So we're well ahead of where the machines are, which is good. Approximately 1.87 million tonnes of material will be excavated from these tunnels. Once excavated, the material will be sifted at the on-site slurry treatment plant, and then it will be re reused elsewhere on the Delta Junction. Instead of transporting the spoil on the local road network, we're now transporting the spoil from within the Water Orton site along purpose-built haul roads. This will remove up to 260,000 HGV movements off roads, which will help to reduce our impact on the environment. I'm an engineer, I'm always impressed to how we can come up with such big projects and how everybody's working toward the same goals and how everybody's putting their contribution to the massive uh, big picture which is building the railway for England. When, when it's completed I think I will be I will feel very proud of what we've achieved. I will probably recall all the good moments, all the achievements, all the challenges we have had to come to that point. It will be kept in the memory of the people which have contributed to that and I will certainly remember all the people which have contributed for us to come to that point and the human adventure that is behind building big projects.